Hello, my name is Bob Willis and welcome to Winnie TV here at SMT Connect, or as I used to call it, SMT Nuremberg. Um, Marco, welcome. Thank you very much for uh, coming and chatting to us. And I know you're going to be talking about uh, cleaning and materials. Uh, but first, if you'd just like to introduce yourself and your company. Thank you, Bob. Nice meeting you for the first Thank you. time, actually. Uh, my name is Marko Novilic. Uh, I uh, come from Croatia. I work with Kaizen now for, it's been six and a half, seven years. I'm a regional manager, regional sales and technical support manager for Europe. I cover mostly this central to eastern European area. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, Kaizen, we do uh, cleaning chemistries, as you know, for PCBs, the whole S&T assembly process. So finished boards after reflow, but also we do a lot of cleaning chemistries for other uh, processes like stencil cleaning, maintenance cleaning. Uh, so yeah, basically. That's now one of the unique things about your company, and I haven't really seen it with other suppliers, uh, is you take a lot of time when a new product comes out in terms of a solder paste, a flux, a rework product, to do your own tests with your own materials to try and find the optimum process. So then you can pass it on to the customer. And I've always felt that that is uh, more believable. So when you talk to a customer, you say, well, we've already done some trials on this. This is our results. Yeah, I mean, I think that's quite a unique feature. Uh, exactly, that's why, what we try to do at Kaizen. So Kaizen comes from Kaizen, uh, the Japanese method of continual improvement, mm. and that's what we try to do. We try to improve our products as the materials on the market are changing. Fluxes are changing continuously, so we need to also continuously change our products to adapt to be uh, more effective on those fluxes. So whenever a new product is out, a new solder paste, a new flux, with, uh, we work with the manufacturers to get samples of that product, and we try to match our materials and develop new materials which will be the most effective at it. So we have a large database of all of the solder paste on the market, and we, uh, when the customer comes to us with their solder paste and fluxes which they're using, we have the experience and the know-how to just recommend the right product for that process and that solder paste. And again, I think you, you're quite unique in that uh, you have a depth of knowledge over and above just doing the, the process trials. You've got a failure analysis laboratory and all the nice sexy equipment to do the analysis for customers as well. It, it, exactly, exactly. We've got multiple facilities around the world. Uh, here in Europe is my uh, facility where we have a big lab. We have a lot of machines cleaning machines, but also we have a lot of analytical equipment. So when we do the trials, we can actually verify that we are actually cleaning the process, mm -hmm. cleaning the boards, and that you have a stable process, which we can then go to the customer and recommend. So at the moment, or uh, during the show, you're uh, more involved with talking to customers with power modules. You know, what demands uh, uh, are they putting on you as a chemistry supplier? Okay, so this is kind of a new market also for us, especially here in Europe, since there's not that big of a demand here in Europe, but it's more and more coming back, but we're seeing after COVID, so mm. we expect more of this market to come back to Europe. Uh, the, the materials are different, the voltages are different, so there are higher requirements. For example, we developed some new products which are more uh, compatible with the materials that are being involved with the power modules. So for mm. example, we have a lot of uh, copper, silver, nickel materials on the DBCs so we do have to develop special materials which will not affect because our main goal is of course to clean the fluxes but then we need to uh, be safe on the substrate we do not want to damage the substrate mm -hmm. so there are different substrates on the power modules and we uh, need to be compatible with them. So we have developed some products, for example, our new Micronox uh, MX2123 is uh, really a water-based uh, cleaner developed for power modules, but it's very compatible uh, towards nickel. It will not damage nickel, silver, and copper. Mm. And if you have also some copper oxidation, it will remove also some of the lighter oxidation. I guess you have to educate uh, designers and suppliers about these aspects because <laughs> For many, many years, uh, when we went very first went into cleaning both aqueous and solvent systems, we would evaluate the components we were using before mm -hmm. and after they were uh, designed into the product. And quite often you found little things that you didn't know about 
Um, and, but so many people just don't evaluate the, the, the materials they're using or designing into a product. So when they come to you, they may have problems, exactly. but they would have problems with any process they're using. So I guess you see quite a lot of component-related issues. Yes, yes, and that's why we have to develop a lot of different products. We have to test all the components that, that are on the market and, and develop products that are compatible with them. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we do not have much say in the design of the product. No, that, no, that, that, no. that would be an ideal world, but we have to adapt to it and we have to develop products which uh, will be compatible with them. Okay, and obviously with all the laboratory equipment you have the tools to be able to evaluate those potential failures for customers and, and pass them back that information which is, which is, which is good. Um, in terms of um, what's the sort of the crucial or the number one question you've been asked so far this week? Uh, so far this week, uh, I would say we get asked a lot of the same questions, but uh, one of the key questions I get asked when implementing a new process is, uh, how long is my bath going to last? So this is something I've encountered my whole career at Kaizen, and this is really a difficult question to answer, of course, because not every process is the same. Uh, but what we try to do at Kaizen, and I think this is our main advantage, uh, we try to develop products which are uh, buffered and when we set up a process on day one that it will stay the same if controlled throughout uh, the lifetime of the product. Mm. Uh, so uh, if you are cleaning at, for example, at 20% concentration, 60 degrees C, we don't want to see a different result or a better result when the concentration goes lower or higher, let's say plus minus 2%. So we develop a product which are pH buffered, so the pH doesn't drop down very quickly after that. So we tend to develop products which are have a longer bath life. But you also offer monitoring systems as well. Exactly, exactly. That is the next step. Uh, so whenever we go to set up a process at a customer, on day one you have an ideal situation. You have the perfect concentration which you set up, the perfect temperature. Mm -hmm. But whenever we leave, then it's up to the customer to monitor and control that process. However, it's not always ideal. Uh, as we know, I, you have different workers, you, you, you uh, introduce a lot of contamination in the product, the machine can vary. Uh, so we developed, a, especially our Kaizen analyst for this purpose, mm -hmm. which is a real-time monitoring system, mm -hmm. which we implement into the machine. It has a sonic velocity sensor and it will measure the concentration and the temperature of the process in real time mm -hmm. and give you feedback so you can always go back and say if I had a problem with one cleaning process I can go back in time and say okay yesterday I had this much temperature I had this much concentration mm -hmm. and then you can uh, diagnose the problem from yeah there. yeah uh, as I said uh, back in the day um, we had very rudimentary uh, methods of control uh, so certainly they've uh, improved over the years and obviously production managers are interested in cost. Uh, so if you can get that balance between cost of ownership, cost of running the process, and monitoring from a quality point of view, yeah. everybody's happy. Marco, yeah. thank you very much for coming along. It's nice to talk to you. And uh, hopefully you uh, are successful uh, with uh, more visitors during the show. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.